Let's learn about electric vehicles versus the internal combustion engine. So are you in the market for a new car? There are about 1.5 billion vehicles in the world right now, most of which spout such toxic fumes that if you were in a garage with the door shut, you would die. And just under 80 million new cars are sold globally each year, of which a very small number are not powered by petrol or diesel, but electricity. But that number is growing fast, pretty much as fast as they can be produced. Indeed, it is starting to appear that many people looking for a new car are not only wanting to go electric, but they are holding off getting a new car until something that suits their needs and price bracket is available. So what are the differences? Is it worth it? Can electric cars do the job that you need? I have compiled some facts and figures to help you make up your mind. Now, before we start, I do need to address a few points. Where required, I will be using data for Tesla cars, and this is for the following reasons. Combustion engine cars are at their peak. They have been fine-tuned and improved for over a century now, and they are pretty much as good as they can just about get. Electric cars are in their infancy, and many companies are on their first-generation models, making direct comparisons unfair, as they will be improving significantly very, very quickly. Tesla, on the other hand, are well past their first generation and are where all other manufacturers are aiming to be. So they really show what an electric car is capable of. That said, many of the points I will be making apply to all electric cars because the points relate to the failings in combustion vehicles. But with that said, let's get down to it. And I will make life easier throughout this by referring to internal combustion engine cars by the abbreviation ICE. This is less of a mouthful. So, the cost. Now, we all know that cars come in a wide range of price brackets, from the cheap and cheerful city car to the ultra expensive luxury ones. And the same is true for electrics. There are many cheap electrics available, especially from Chinese manufacturers, and they do tend to be limited by range mostly, and that is true. If you want a family-sized vehicle with at least 200 miles of range, you'll probably need to be spending over £25,000 in UK money, around US dollars And if you want a Tesla, they start around £45,000. However, whilst combustion engine vehicles are at the cheapest they can possibly get already, Electric cars are getting cheaper all the time. The battery is by far the most expensive component. It is commonly agreed that at a cost of around £75 or $100 per kilowatt hour, the sticker price or the price you pay for a car will reach parity with ICE cars. In 2020, they averaged a price of around £105 or $140 per kilowatt hour, and by 2021 that had dropped to around £100 or $132 per kilowatt hour. Tesla is slightly cheaper than that, and at its battery day outlined a new battery architecture and manufacturing process that will bring the cost down to around £40 or $50 per kilowatt hour by 2025, maybe even sooner. I'm sure you have realised that this will make the purchase price for an electric vehicle much cheaper than an ICE vehicle. And that is without even considering the cost savings in running and maintenance. The cost of electricity is cheaper than petrol or diesel. The maintenance costs are lower as less things go wrong, which we look at in a bit. They hold their value better even now, and that is without the second-hand ICE market crashing, which it will do in a few years when, well, nobody wants to buy one, 
and just about every other metric is lower. So if money is all that matters, electric wins. So what about the range? Well, the range seems to be the go-to argument of every ICE advocate. Okay, so the average ICE vehicle varies depending on size of car and fuel efficiency, obviously, but an average is about 300 miles for a full tank of fuel, which is pretty much all you can drive before needing a break anyway, for the loo or a drink or, well, even just to stretch your legs and wake yourself up a little bit. And the Tesla Model 3? Well, the standard version does 305 miles on a full charge, and the long range does 360 miles, so that works out pretty equal. The other point argued is the time to refuel against the time to recharge. Well, if we ignore queues and time to pay, you can refuel a full tank in about 5 minutes, roughly, and with electric, you can add about 200 miles of range at a Tesla supercharger in just 15 minutes. Now, again, a few extra points. Most people charge their electric vehicles at home overnight and never have to visit a charging station except on long journeys. So they actually save time compared to visiting a petrol station and the cost is even cheaper this way. Hey, if you have solar panels and a battery, it could even be said to be free. But anyway, if you are driving 300 miles or more, a toilet break and a tea or coffee is going to take longer than it takes to recharge your car. And you do not have to stay there with it whilst it does it, unlike when you are refueling at a petrol pump. So, yep, I'm afraid that electric wins again. Let's look at maintenance. We all know that this can get pretty pricey with petrol and diesel engines. Even if nothing goes wrong, my yearly service is so costly, I pay for it monthly and hope nothing else needs doing. And I have a relatively new and reliable Kia. Now, I am not a mechanic or a car enthusiast, so I nipped onto some car websites to see what actually goes wrong with ICE vehicles most regularly. And boy, it's quite a list. So, you have the gearbox, clutch, turbo, alternator, and cylinder head gasket as the most common faults. But then if that is not enough, we also have a spluttering engine, poor fuel economy, a dead battery, running out of fuel, putting the wrong fuel in, starter motor, failed emissions tests, overheating, a seized engine from a lack of oil, water in the engine and distributor, broken timing belts, spark plugs, the cat, the silencer, the list just goes on and on and on. But we have just taken that as the way things are. And this is even after a century of apparently perfecting everything. So what about electric cars then? Well, tires, brakes, fluid levels such as coolant, brake and windscreen, and the battery. That's about it. Now, tires, brakes and fluid levels, well, they happen to ICE vehicles also. And electric cars with their regenerative braking actually wear their brake pads down more slowly. And as for the battery? Well, Tesla cars manufactured a decade ago are still showing around 90% battery capacity. And the batteries now are better than ever. Indeed, they are now quoted at being able to last a million miles or more, which is about 1.6 million kilometers. That compares to ICE vehicles, which might last two or 300,000 miles, maybe. So again, there is no comparison. Electric wins. What about the performance? Now, performance is not something everybody is concerned about, admittedly but I will just say it straight out. Unless you have the fastest racing-tuned ICE vehicle available, then you will not even keep up. 
The slowest Tesla only takes around 6 seconds 0 to 60, and the fastest ones do it in under 2 seconds. There really is no comparison. You see, electric drive chains apply their power instantly. They have less parts to move before anything happens and are just way more efficient. Now, they do have just a single gear, which can mean they lose out at the very top end to some of the fastest ICE vehicles with the biggest engines. But most people never get to drive at those speeds. What matters most is a quick burst of speed to join fast moving traffic on a motorway or overtake something slow on a single lane road. Most people never go above 80 miles per hour, never mind 100. So, yep, electric is a clear winner here again. Okay, so what about the general experience? Now, this is subjective and it really depends on the price you pay for the vehicle. Something for 10K will only have the bare essentials and seats that numb the bum on a long journey, as I can testify with my cheap Kia. But if you spend 30 or 40K or more, you will get much more for your money. But that said, if we look at Teslas, the owners rave about them more than any other vehicle. The rides are smooth, the technology is cutting edge. The cars are the safest available. And they get updated over the air, often giving them more range, faster acceleration, and new features such as dog mode, which keeps the cabin cool for your favorite pet if you need to leave them alone for a bit. Ice vehicle manufacturers seem to have got to a point and then got slack. They gave up innovating, and now there is no time left for them to do it anymore. They are dying out, and by the next decade, they will not exist in any great way, shape, or form. So for one final time, I have to say that electric wins hands down. So you see, we are entering a new era of transport, cleaner and better than anything the traditional ICE vehicles could offer. And if you don't agree, well, let me know why not below. And if you already have an electric variant, let us know what your experience is. If you want to know more about how autonomous vehicles will change the world, why not watch this video next, where I go into depth on the whole subject. And if you have already seen that one, then YouTube seems to think you might like this one next. If you like this, don't forget to hit the like button below. And if you want to see more in the future, then subscribe to show your support. It really helps a lot. And as always, thank you for dropping by.